Slippers. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, so we put this assembly back together. Races are in there on each side. New seal on the back, new gasket on there, new seal in there. So we're offering it up and we're gonna get some new bolts in. And the, the bolt pattern on here, uh, the spacing is wider at the top than at the bottom. So you can't, can't put it together wrong. Um, it's clocked in a certain direction because the swivel is offset. Um, it's not perfectly flat. So Al's just tightening up the top um, swivel pin bolts here. What we did was um, slide the half shaft in and then we offered the bottom um, housing with the bearing on up to the swivel or to the ball and then lowered down the swivel pin down into the second set of bearings and that locates it now we just need to tighten up and do the test to make sure that we've got the right number of spaces in so attempt to like five and we've only got four axles but we're gonna put the purple spacer in um, part number if you need it t o f 100,000 um, so this one is the bog standard lowest range and from this you will you'll see later on in the video we're going to use a dial gauge and see whether this is right or whether we need to move up to a different spacer spacer the nut I was just checking but I think it's do this up to 30 newton meters um, and then give it a wiggle to let it settle. Yeah, 30 newton meters, you're right. Oh yeah, what we're trying to measure is it thousands of an inch. That's all we're doing. Right. Oh yeah, and there's loads of give in here. I don't know if the camera's at the right angle, but previously when we did this, I'm pretty sure there was never anything when we had the wrong size spacer in. So now with the right one, the whole load of slack. So that should just settle. So for the staked nut or from 99, um, year 1999 onwards, uh, and the staked nut, which is what we've got, it says 210 Newton meters, which is the final torque. It's 210 Newton meters or 155 pound feet. There she is. Oh, she blows. Limit is it? So now we've got the dial gauge on there. Um, dial gauge should just go on the flat of the nut. Now, when we wiggle it, we're looking for no end flow up to 0 0.025 mil of end flow. 0 0.02. Good. 0.02 there so we're uh, within spec which means we don't have to change the spacer inside um, depending on which like how far out of spec you are will depend on what spacer you need um, so that looks good with that one happy with that so now we know that the end flow is right you can't see because it's actually under here but the wash has got the flat point um, that's lined up with the shaft that comes out you want to hit the flange of the nut so that that meets the flat and and that's um that's how you basically lock this nut off so we've just done that with just with a chisel and a hammer dang dang there you go so guys what we're doing here is um in this setup here this is um what sets sort of the preloads on uh the swivel so as you can see here, this is the old one that's come out and there's a number of spacers in here, which sort of gaps this, which pushes down on the bearing at the top of the swivel ball. Um, so the amount of force it should take to pull this uh, when it's loaded correctly is between 3. Point, well, I can't remember, 3.5 and 4.2, I think. 
I wasn't really listening. Yeah, I'll check it. Um, and then all you've got to do is just chuck it in there, pull, and see how much load on there in kilos it takes before it turns. Obviously, if it needs, if it's a lower number, lower than the the point that you want, you'd take out some spaces, and if it's a higher number, you'd you'd add some more in. Between 3.6 and 4.5 kilos for that to turn, this is and it's turning about 1.8. About, about <laughs> so we need to take some spaces out. Your one. What was it supposed to be? Between three and point six and four point five. Mm, still down low. It stiffens up again at the point. Just reach four. At six. So it's easy to go right. That looks like two or three newton meters in here. It's between three and four, and then a bit stiffer there. So there you are, guys. Who knows exactly what we're measuring there? If you're on full lock to the right, the initial turn to centre is way below. Yeah, uh, about, about two, two kilos. Stiffens up to three, four, four, and then right up to six on the final push. So who knows? Thanks, Land Rover. Just um, adding the swivel lube. It's a grease, but it's a little bit more fluid than... And it smells like gas, which is weird. It smells disgusting. So we're going with the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, it's not overfilling yet. So. The Haynes manual said refer to chapter one, but that meant turning pages and I can't be asked. <laughs> so we're gonna put the whole lot in. All right guys, so we're just on the rear now, um, doing the same process as we did on the front uh, with the purple spacer in there and we're gonna have to measure the end float. Uh, we're filming this one as well, just in case this one differs. So what Lewis is doing right there is just, he's tightened it to 30 newton meters, is that right? Yeah. Um, just giving it a wiggle so the bearing seats and then you'll tighten it all the way to the correct torque, which I think is 210. 210. 210 Newton meters. Um, and then we'll get the dial gauge on it and see what's what. So no end float registering really here, guys. Um, we got a little bit uh, on the first go, but had another crack and it's not really registering any. So that suggests that the purple uh, spacer is the correct one okay. for these rears, which is great. So hopefully that's the case all for all four corners, because if it isn't, obviously you have to stop what you're doing, work out what space you need, order said spacer, and then wait for that to be delivered before you can carry on. Right, so this is the last corner for us to do. Um, we found that this one does actually have more play than we want. So at the moment we're basically zero, 0 0.01. When I put a bit of pressure inwards, we go up to 0 0.06 and back 0 0.07. So there's just a little bit too much play in here. So we'll have a look at the guide in the book, see what shim we now need, order it, switch them out, and then we should have no play. Right guys, so today what we're doing, the um, cranked radius and trailing arms have turned up, uh, which will hopefully sort out this problem. As you can see there, the springs are leaning backwards and here we have cranked trailing arm. Um, <clears throat> so we're gonna be putting those in, which will ho hopefully straighten up the rear. And then the front is equally bad and if not worse um, as you can see here how the spring is sitting on that seat the axle is leaning forward and the problem with that is as the axle tips forward the whole steering geometry changes so you're almost steering from above rather than a center point below um, and there we are Offset. yeah seriously yellow brick part cranked radius arms
So what I'm doing right now is I'm just nipping off the top of this um, shock for two reasons. I'm going to do the same over there. One is I don't think I actually pushed these uh, bushes in very well in the first place. And the second is I never actually measured the amount of travel uh, difference between this and the old set. So I know that the springs are a two inch lift, but I don't know if there's a full two inch, uh, tr two inch travel distance in these shocks. And when you are ordering extended brake lines, you want to know both the difference between your sort of general lift and your additional travel so you don't end up tugging on those lines. So I'm just going to measure that up now uh, by fully extending this, uh, this shock and measuring it against the old one which is on the floor somewhere. So you might notice a bit more yellow around. We've today undone the old trailing arms and poly bushed up and put in the new ones which should accept a bit better the the two inches of lift that we've put on so you can see already that the diff is at a much better angle um we've also done the same on the front more yellow with the radius arms so these are from brit park poly bushed again and with many different lifts with the crane and <laughs> various fucking around we managed to get them back in and again i mean the diff's still up at an angle but we haven't got any weight on there from the engine and i mean we can tell that the shocks are also a lot more upright so i think everything's sitting a bit better and by the time we put the weight of you know engine gearbox um and, and by the time we put the tub on the back we should be a lot straighter all right guys thanks so much for tuning in um as you will have seen we've got quite a lot done on there uh with the um axles rebuilt we're really really happy with how they've come out and obviously we've massively improved the geometry of the suspension with the cranked radius arms and trailing arms um thanks so much for tuning in um please do hit uh subscribe and like um and you can uh get more regular updates on instagram at buster bill Thank <laughs> you.